Welcome everyone to our third episode of World Wrestling Headquarters podcast. I am Watchtower, and along with me, we have Chris Matthews and Chris Kane. That's going to be really confusing as far as who I'm talking to. Baron is, so far, he might be on later, who knows, uh, but for now, it's just us three, so it might actually be a short podcast this week. Uh, we have a lot to talk about, including... Um, and, uh, wow, that was very random. Um, including uh, showdown results. We have a new international champion. Uh, we have one title that's been retained or successfully defended. And we also have predictions for the next showdown card. And at the same time, we have some big news on an affiliate. Something that I never thought would really happen, but it happened. Go figure. Uh, at least for me, because I did not see this coming. But uh, first, let's talk about uh, showdown results. Um, we'll talk about with the with the first uh, contention. It's uh, Annalise Vance. She won the is it the Cybernetico match? It's a Chikara, it's a Chikara match normally, but she is now the new number one contender for the Bombshells title. Uh, it, it looks like all of her training with Kane is is now paying off. I know. So uh, I know sure the it, handler. Yeah, and and uh, apparently it's it. It looked like she was rusty as well when she returned because she was when she did uh, general RPing. She was doing short, short replies. So it felt like she was still trying to get back into pace, so to speak. Um. But now she she won it, and she's facing Soraya Waters at War Games for the Bombshells title. So, um, granted, that match was very interesting because I've never seen something like that. I mean, I guess you can say it was like a scramble. You gotta mute your mic whenever a car passes by, King. Just saying. I was fixing to. Yeah, um, but uh, it, from the look for the match description, a cybernet, a cybernetico, I guess that's what it's called. Uh, I guess that's I guess that's what you call a uh, the way that WWE did it is a champion a scramble match. You know, every minus the the timetable. So, but you know, nonetheless, Annalise won and she has a shot at the pay per view, which is well done for her. What do you guys think about that? Go ahead, Matthew. I I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, I mean, I don't know Annalise's uh, style, but uh, I could see Walter is having a challenge on our hand on our hand at War Games. All right, Kane. Okay, what about you? Well, you know, I've watched her for a long time, and I took her under my wing. You know, in character and out of character. To help her out, and uh, you know, Waters is coming strong since she's got that belt. Yeah, that's true. And not not only that, um, she beat Chris Orton this week. So not only is she make she's proving that she's the queen of bombshells on the bombshell side, she's also like proving it to the guy. I can kick your ass too. Right, and I mean, I kind of look at her too. Is uh, if I don't watch it, she might roll in with everybody else that seems to want a piece of my no limits belt. Oh, that depends. I mean, she, yeah, yeah so. she, you know, she could go for that, but at the same time, there are other championships there. Because so. I've seen guys like Chris Orton. You know, I believe I faced him along the road to get to the limits title. Uh, I think so. I don't know. I don't know if it was in the tournament, but I'm. I think it was uh, like a match or two before it. Oh. But uh, you know, speaking of Kane, he, um, he now he retained his championship. He retained the No Limits title. Um, he beat Jacob Cass in a two out of three three falls match, and that was a really good match. I mean, you have Paige coming out and then, you know, trying to help Cass, but it didn't really work out because Andy Rhodes 
ended up coming out and pretty much chasing her down. And then at the end, once he retained, you see Ace as an Ace comes up and offers him a membership spot on um, on the on the group, and uh, that is actually very interesting because usually I thought he would be at least Kane would be the lone wolf guy, like he didn't seem like he needed a group to do things on his own. Um, could it possibly be that uh, since he's getting old that he needs? Action now? No, no, no. Let me tell you the deal here. Chris Kane don't need nobody. I mean, how old is he now? I mean, you know. I mean, Kane comes in here at 37 years old, but still, it don't matter. He's still the redneck wrestling machine. The no limits title safe. I don't need no help. I made a smart investment. Ah, uh, okay. When you have an asset as girl. It's Chris Kane. It's a smart investment for not only Aces and Eights, but myself. Well, and I mean, I mean, another smart investment in Andy Rhodes. If I didn't get that back, you know, Tate's interference could have very well cost me the No Limits Championship. Now, let's be frank here. Was Kane a little nervous when he saw Paige on the outside? It's like this. I, before I answer that question, I do want to give Cass some credit. As bad as, you know, I don't like the guy. You know, he's a great talent in the ring. And going against him one more time, you know, there was those questions running in just like returning. Can I get the job done? And right. then, you know, out of nowhere, here comes Paige making her WWH debut, and she pulls me out of the ring after I hit what I thought would be the last TKO of the night, and you thought that was ball game, but she pulled me out of the ring. I'm like, great. And then the roll up, but boom, got that shoulder off the mat in time. Andy took care of her. No limits title come home, and it's now safe. Not only with Chris Kane, but with the Aces and Eights. Now, speaking of Aces and Eights, there's been a lot of attacks lately. Uh, there was an attack on the international title, I believe, or was it the what or the main event? I forgot which one. Um, but it's now the big question is when that world title match when. Chris Matthews, the leader, I guess you could say, of Aces and Eights, faces off against Randy Fields. And if Matthews loses, is that going to hurt Aces and Eights because they just saw their king get dethroned? Well, it's like this for me. I don't know where Matthews is. Apparently, he disappeared on us. But uh, I mean, uh, for me, personally... And it's a hell in a cell, I don't too, it, so that's everyone's barred from ringside. Well, I want to tell you something right now about aces and eights. It doesn't matter if, you know, the head GM, Riley, you know, puts it out there, or if Edwards puts it out there, if Mansfield puts it out there. If aces and eights wants to be at ringside, aces and eights will, will be at ringside. But I doubt they would want to uh, well. well would they even want to get involved? Because that's a hell in a cell. I, I doubt that they would want to even step in because once that door closes, you're, you're going to get hurt somehow, right? That's how it usually ends with those types of matches. Somebody's going home either bloodied or worse, injured. Well, I mean, you know, I, being the vice president of Aces and Eights, Chris Kane probably won't be there because I'm going to have my hands full dealing with Scotty Payne. Right, and it's going to be in an asylum match too, which is, let's just say Kane will not, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just going with a prediction here, regardless if he wins or loses here. But let's just say Kane will probably be carried out. 
<laughs> Same thing with Scotty. Oh, no doubt. Uh, yeah, so I doubt Kane will even be out in ringside at all for the rest of the night after his match. I mean, same, right, goes, and, same goes for Scotty, too, because especially since he thought of it, he wants it this type of match. He, well, a little history. It's not the first time it's happened in WWH. Ah, uh, really? Uh, we had, we, well, not an asylum match, but, you know, Scotty Payne, Chris Kane has pushed off twice already in WWH over the years, and we're one and one. It's a tied ball game, and we have done a, it was some kind of weird match Scotty come up with the first time. No, the first time it was me. It was Tennessee Street Fight. I got the victory over Scotty Payne not long after he debuted in WWH. And then once he established himself, we met one more time in his match. It's always, he picked up the victory. This time, I wanted him to have the stipulation because not only am I the champion, but kind of like I said, when I come back, I'm the old cat on the block. I got something to prove. And I will promise you this right here. This is an exclusive. I guarantee as vice president of Aces and Eights, not one member of the Aces and Eights will interfere in that match or be ringside. It will be one-on-one, and I will end the illustrious career of Scotty Payne. Right. And, and, uh, and also... Uh, as we're going over the the other results, um, who else? Let's talk about the the tag titles. Uh, granted, aces and eights are not part of it, but they have their own thing going too with the Horsemen, the Devils Rejects, and Jake and Key Morbid, whatever their team name is. That in itself, I'm so. I mean, granted, every you know everyone was like, "Oh, it's a War Games match." That's even crazier than before, but. Since Aces and Eights is not in there, I doubt Aces and Eights wants to get involved in any way with those three teams because those three teams, they look like they're a little crazier than Aces and Eights as far as like tag teams go. Because you got Sting, well, in, the, you got Sting in the Undertaker and one, and then you have Jake and Key Morbin on the other, and then you have the Devils, you know, Xavier and Colby as the third. So um, those three are already like battling it out as it is, and the last thing, and knowing aces and A's that they get involved, they'll probably, all three of them are probably just gonna say, you know what, let's just take out aces and eights, <laughs> which is, well, you know. <laughs> which is it's probably not, which is probably not a good idea on the aces and eights part, because then next thing you know, you'd be like, we don't have anybody to be in that. Well, they're no. about to disband soon, anyways, because they're about to get that ass whooped by Randy Fields. Oh God! Uh, that's my yeah. intro. Yeah. That's my intro. And there's and this is the Rock and Randy Fields joining us as he was late to the converse, conversation. Uh, well, you know we don't get designated times when this podcast is going to start. Well, well, that's true. We haven't really decided on a specific time because you know nobody's on most of the day. So, uh, but uh, true. We're just I was going, busy. But uh, right now we're just going over showdown results, and let's talk. And we'll quickly talk about the triple threat elimination tag match, which happened with um, John Blade, Alicia Hicks, uh, Randy Fields, and Equinox against uh, you know and uh, Biker Bitch and and uh, Chris Matthews. Now, at the end, Aces and Eights attacks Randy Fields and Equinox. You know. Even though Randy Fields and Equinox won the match, they still attacked them regardless. It was kind of like them still sending a message saying that we, you know, we're not going to run away that easily or something. No, it wasn't that. It was we wanted to announce that uh, John Blade was our hero. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Yes, I said that was a straight face. That calls for a shot of whiskey. You know, um, but a shot of whiskey for the working man. I'm down. Yeah, but in the end, though, um, Randy Fields and Equinox did win it. And uh, this upcoming showdown, um, it's uh, who is it? Who did I? What did I book? I book. Uh, I Randy, believe it's Randy, Randy, Randy Fields, Fields against Biker Bitch, and Chris Matthews is going to be on her corner. And then you have Chris Matthews versus Equinox with Biker Bitch at his corner. 
Yeah, you know what I just find funny is that, you know, Equinox, Randy Fields, they don't need anybody in their corner. Uh, as much as you talk about how destructive aces and eights are, aces and eights are, God, you know, that's a shitty fucking word to say. Aces and eights. All right, there we go. They, they always seem to uh, be together, especially after that match uh, on Showdown, if you guys read that part as you were talking. Yeah, we yeah we did, and uh, it, 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 now my question is: Do you think that just because they're a group, do they really need each other's back? Because I mean, Chris Matthews is the world champion, let me right. So you would think, like him being the top dog, he wouldn't need that protection. Well, you you yeah you would think that, but unfortunately, and the same thing with Chris Kane too. Like you would think he wouldn't need that uh, protection as well, since he's a champion as. In his own right. And not only that, you have Everett Al- Aloni, who's now the new international champion. And, you know, again, they're all together. But still, like, they still somehow need each other. Like, they need each other's back, even though they're all champions in their own rights. Like, do you... They're champs, hey, I so, I mean, people are gunning for them. Of course, they're going to need some type of protection. Right. But... I will take up chaos without aces and eights. I mean, that was plain and simple. You didn't know I was part of it until it was all said and done. This is true. And so I don't need nobody. I just made a smart investment for the future. And uh, not only is it investment for me, I think it's an investment for aces and eights to have me as the No Limits champion. Now, speaking now, aside from the champions and their feuds, we also did have a Rock versus Dylan K. And since The Rock won, who knows exactly which title he's gunning for either. Like, is he going to gun for a title or is he just going to just beat people up and just not care? <laughs> well, you know, The Rock is, uh, if you read his previous role play, he's in production right now on a movie. Right. Uh, you know, of he, course he is. We won't because, I mean, I mean, yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I'm going to come. The Rock's going to be there uh, here and there. <laughs> jobbed for the rock to make him famous one more time before everybody forgot about him all right that's what happened there yeah you know there's one title the rock hasn't held once and that's the no limits championship so you never know hey, just fuck it, bitch. oh yeah. <laughs> wow wait what about the tag titles though and the international hasn't he did he hold those or no uh know. the rock did hold the international tag titles i don't think so but you know there was a long period of time. There was four different companies in one company, uh, and there was a lot of titles going around. Well, yeah, well, yeah, that's true. But The yeah. Rock has won the uh, TNA. Oh, we had the, oh, it was actually NWA Championship, uh, the WWA Championship, World Heavyweight Championship. I mean, he sold the, the Rock's just waiting for other people to catch up. If you know what I'm saying. Right, and, and don't even talk about the tag titles. Those are going to belong to the culture shock sooner or later. I mean, that's just the facts. And and and, and speaking of that, they're they're debuting as a team this week against uh, Chris Orton and who are they? And who's his partner? Uh, Sasha Banks. So that's going to be an interesting match in itself. Um, another uh, since since we already talked about the results and. In going forward, uh, we, you know, for the next showdown card, we have uh, Sergeant Devin Howard, who's making his debut. Uh, we also have Katie Lee that's making her debut. So it's Paige and Tim Stone versus Black Solar. So that's a not bad of a dark match card right there. And then we just got maybe six more new people that joined WWH this week as well. So the following week, they're going to be debuting too. Um, oh, Adrian, not to cut you off. I just got a text message and we're going to go into more details on this for people that was not on the site and know. But uh, live on Showdown this week, we will hear from the King of the Mountain, Jeff Jarrett. Oh, that's right. Well, I was we were, we were going to get to that, but that's why we're saving it for last. Um, Hi. Uh, mute, mute your mic. There you go, Sam. Um, but uh, we. I just got that information. But uh, as folks listen to this podcast, and we get to that, uh, 
Um, but Jeff Jarrett will make an appearance, and people's just going to have to tune in to this podcast all the way through to find out how special that is. Yeah, that's this is this is this is true. Um, let's go ahead and get through the showdown card, and we'll give our predictions. So um, the dark, first dark match is Mickey Fandango versus Sergeant Devin Howard. Um, I'm, I mean, let's be honest, we haven't seen Mickey Fandango on in a good while. Uh, he pretty much just went MIA. So yeah, I, and I do believe Sergeant Sergeant Slaughter, or I'm sorry, not Sar- Sergeant Slaughter, <laughs> uh, has already posted yeah, a role play, right? Yeah, he already posted his role play. So he and it's and I read it too, and it's actually it was funny in the first part. It was it involved the cheese McDonald's cheeseburger eating championship belt, and I just laughed like no joke. That's my next championship. Yeah. So. Uh, my prediction is it's, it's going to be Sergeant Howard who's going to win it. Um, yeah, I, I as much as I might agree I mean, with you on that one because he already posted. He's already early, like he already got it out of the way. So he's he's going <coughs> to like you know be, not because not saying that we're calling it. It's just we haven't seen Mickey on in a, in more than three weeks. So you know something must have happened at home or. Know, or work, he got busy. No, so we don't really ask. Um, I'll... But uh, the second match is Katie Lee versus Desiree Drake. Uh, she told me uh, Desiree told me why she didn't she didn't show up last week because she's in college too, so she's dealing with uh, papers and I think midterms too. So that's understandable on her part. Very understandable. That's that's important. Um, School's a bitch. Yeah, um, so as far as this match goes, I think she will show up for this one because it, it doesn't require a lot of minimum words to post a role play. However, and plus, Katie Lee has been really active here lately, too. Even though she just joined yesterday, she's already role playing and talking to everybody. So it'll be a toss up, to be honest. But as far as who will post first, it'll probably be Katie Lee. Well, just knowing who. Uh... Katie Lee is uh, not taking anything away from Desiree. Uh, my prediction is Katie Lee is going to come in strong and do her damn thing. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, who do you got? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with Katie Lee. She obviously knew, and I always like seeing new people. Uh, anytime someone knows shows and we're going to give a prediction, uh, I mean, you said she did no show last week, correct? Yeah. Uh, she, which, so which, that's never a good sign for even even if she does show up. So uh, I'm gonna go with Katie Lee on this one. All right, uh, uh, Samson, I guess is still muted because he's probably doing something. So no, he probably had to go to the oh, okay. Uh, what family is he, dollar? Who do you <laughs> family? Shut up. Uh, okay, so Samson. No masturbating on the podcast, Samson. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my god! Oh boy! Wow. All right. Oh, so. This is a great award-winning show. All right. about masturbation. <laughs> okay, so uh, who do you got, Katie Lee or Desiree Drake? Uh, well, I, I haven't seen Desiree like on because you said you know she was in college and so she didn't show no show last week. So I probably have to go for Katie Lee on this. But if she does, if Desiree does show up and impress me, you never know. My vote, my vote might change once uh, I see a role play. All right. Uh, the third match, Paige versus Aurora Borealis. And again, same thing as Katie Lee. Paige has been active as hell ever since she joined. Uh, she's been even interacting with everyone in the on the chat, too. So uh, apparently she and Jacob Cass are building a relationship. So apparently um, just by uh, her character developments going on. So uh, I would go with my prediction with Paige on this one. Agreed. What do you guys think? Agreed. Yeah, I'm going to go with Paige on this one. Uh, shit, she hasn't even been on the site a week, and she's probably got more posts than Randy Fields and The Rock combined. So that's... <laughs> no shit. Yeah. That's always a good sign. Yeah. Um, and now, finally, we have the main event. It's Tim Stone versus Black Solar. Tim Stone, he's been active as well. Um, he was, yeah, but wasn't Tim Stone on the main roster and went back to the dark side? 
Yeah, that's because um, the reason why was mainly um, he wasn't on. And the reason for that was because he he didn't have good internet. Like, he, he I guess he was waiting for the cable company to install it better for him. So he was waiting for that good amount of time. So when I actually got in contact with him, um, he finally... Um, he finally said, like, I just need to find, like, the right time. I need to figure out how to put myself back out there. So I'm like, I'll just throw you back out there. Fuck it. You know, like, so I booked him, you know, easy. Granted, he's in dark matches, but at least he's now active again to what he, what he, to what he used to be as far as active goes. So my prediction will be Tim Stone to win this one so he can get back on the main roster. What do you guys think? I'm going to say Tim Stone will win it. No, I'm going to say now that he's got his stuff, I'm going to say he's the next breakout star in WWH. All right. Baron, who do you got? Baron. He go bye-bye. Oh, he left. Did he really? Uh, it must, might have been his uh, voice thing. But now I think I could see... Uh, Tim Stone uh, wearing this one. Oh, okay. All righty. Uh, I, mean, I haven't seen anything from Black Solo in a long time. He hasn't been active, so. Yeah, this is true. So we'll we'll find out. Baron, who do you got? I got Tim Stone coming uh, out of this one. He was on the main roster. He was pretty active when he was here. Hopefully his internet doesn't go to shit, so. All right. We'll go with Tim Stone on this one because I, I haven't seen anything from Black Solo. I don't. I don't know if this is the first match or what. I think this is probably like a make or break for Black Solar, to be honest. So, yeah. and he's the Chris Kane wannabe guy too. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh god! All right, so now we move on to the main card. It's uh, match one is Zach Shields versus Jets. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm very surprised that Jetstream has been active. Now, at the same time, I'm not surprised because when he first joined back, he said he's been really busy lately ever since WWE closed down. So him, he, so once he got the email that it was coming back, it took him, like, he, he saw it, but he didn't really click it or reply or anything. So. Yeah, I think he's another one of those nostalgia members. Uh, came back from the nostalgia fact. Uh, so He was a Hall of Hero at one point. In t- or he is a Hall of Hero, and, you know, in 2011, Adrian uh, passed those things out to everyone. Uh, hey, 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 that's when I went in the Hall of Heroes. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I did want to touch on that a little bit. I mean, uh, at least I was around and did a few things. Uh, I still don't know why Jet Strings there. But uh, if he shows up, I'd say he could do it. I but think, well, I I'm think gonna I, go with the other guy, Zach Shields. Yeah, because um, yeah, he was a. Yeah. He was a friend. I think he's a friend of Kurt Orton, and apparently, and from the looks of it, Kurt Orton's been recruiting. So he's been doing a pretty well job. Um, Still I, didn't do good as I did. <laughs> yeah, apparently he had the biggest payout in history against Jared on this on the last stuff. That's some of that Mansfield shit, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Yeah, uh, second match uh, is Niobe Martin versus Genevieve versus Latoya Hicks. Um, I'm going to go with Niobe on this one because she showed up, and even though her dark match came out to a draw, that was more than enough to promote her to the main roster. So, uh, uh, I agree. So, I mean, Genevieve, she's learning, but she's being trained by Pandora. So, her RPs will get better in, you know, in time. Uh, but she's, she's and so, you, we all know who Latoya Hicks is, so yeah. So we're I'm gonna go with Niobe on this one. What do you guys think? I agree. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Niobe too. I, I've had history with her back in La La Land, and uh, I think she'll pull out this one pretty easy. All right, I, so, so, so. Niobe on this one. I had I never faced her, but I had history like with, like what Field said. So Niobe on this one. All right, and the third match is a team debut match. It's a culture shock with Del- Dylan K and Pandora Barrett versus Chris Orton and Sasha Banks. Now, 
Now, the build-up to this was apparently, even though they're good friends, I guess they want, they too had a, have a goal in mind, and that's to go after the tag team titles. Uh, Chris Orton, he still has his eyes on the No Limits title, and Sasha Banks has her eyes on the bombshells, but for now, they're at the back of the line since, uh, you know, since other people, since other contenders beat them. So, uh, for now, it seems like they're, they're trying to get those two, at least, Gordon and, and Banks, are trying to get back up the ladder so that way they can be a threat once more. But with Dylan Kay and Pandora, there will be a tough challenge per se because Pandora also seems to have her eyes set on the Bombshells title too. I don't know about Dylan, but I think Dylan probably wants to go after the international or or, or well. Well, Dylan's probably trying to get that boot out of his ass since last week he got boots to asses. That's, well, let me tell you that's true. Everybody jobs to The Rock But you know Dylan K He felt sorry for The Rock He could have come in there and finished him off When he hit him with the Psycho driver there or Whatever the hell it's called And uh But he, he pulled him up He let him get that shoulder up Because I mean The Rock's not there And we feel sorry for him We'll see wait, him in six so, months So wait so you're saying this was a pity win yeah, I mean it was it was a job thing. I mean, <laughs> wow, okay. I, I mean, was, there's no pity win for the Rock. The Rock just wins when he's here, uh, which is maybe once was, a month. Uh, I uh, think he I think yeah, he let that, uh, Rock win because let him count out his uh his his shock treatment. Let him hit him with the Rock bottom, and that's how he won. Don't uh, let but, him do uh, that. Wow. But moving back into the match at hand here. In a minute. All right. Nope. Not yet. Hang on. He's going to mute himself. All right. We can go. <laughs> Wait for it. Five. No. Nobody. <laughs> that crap. Oh, jeez. All right. Now, uh, are you? Is, is there more? <laughs> yes. I want to give my prediction on this match. All right. Well, there's a it. there's a damn they're having a damn parade right now in his neighborhood. Uh, sounds like that's it. All right, go for it. Go for it. But what's gonna happen here is, I mean, you got to think of it like this. Not only is Dylan K and Pandora a tag team, they're best friends from way back. As we're starting to learn a little more about that, so they oh. know each other on a personal level and a ring level. Wait. So here's my question: Since Pandora is technically going to be dating Matthews. Is there going to be a feud there perhaps with Dylan K and Matthews to make sure that, you know, well, Matthews I mean, as we, learned, <laughs> uh, yeah. as we learned in the locker room, Dylan K has already walked right into Chris Matthews locker room, picked up his WWH world heavyweight title and put it on his shoulder and told him this is the future. If he don't watch his ass. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that's what it, yeah, that that may actually makes sense. It's pretty much so. Basically, Dylan already has his sights on the world title. Exactly, and I mean he's done put his thread in the tag division too. Because if you was at the live event, you know earlier, you know he smacked the hell out of one of the Devil's Rejects in the middle of the ring. Yeah, that's true. And so, what is your predictions right now? Uh, right now, I'm gonna go with the buddies. We're going with uh, go. culture shock. Pan, huh? and Dora and Dylan. All right, Samson, who do you got? Well, uh, well, I mean, like Orton and Banks got off a tough loss. Was on a tough loss, so who knows if they can come back? So I'll probably have to go with Dylan and Pandora on this because. You know, you never know. I mean, they could work well together and be able to beat those two. All right, Baron, who Matt, you got? Get laid. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All I'm right. gonna go with Dylan and Pandora on this one. Uh, All right. You know, I'm not too keen on the other two. All right. Now, match four. This is probably a good match because uh, I believe Chris Kane is gonna be at ringside during commentary, and it's gonna be Scotty Payne versus Jacob Cass. Uh, you have one contender that's still wanting that shot against Kane, but then you have another contender in Scotty Payne that pretty much said, I'm coming after you regardless. 
I will say this much. Uh, I will be at commentary for that match. And uh, God help you. I'm not reading a script. So the hell with all of you. <laughs> all right. And so who's, so what's your prediction then? I'm not going to get involved, but I'm going to say Scotty Payne is going to show that he wants my belt at War Games, and he's going to put a beating on Jacob Cass, and if Cass ain't ready, he's liable to find himself on the inserted list. Damn. Samson. Oh, shit. Samson, who do you got? I, I have to go with Scotty Payne on this. I mean, he's number one contender for the title, and if I know Sky the way I think I know him, he's going to basically destroy Cass and come after Kane right after the match. I can see it coming. See it happen. There, I do want to add this real quick before we burn because he doesn't matter. Uh, Whoa. <laughs> wow. Whoa, now. Was, hey, now. Hey, 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 hey. Know your role. Shut your mouth, jabroni. Wow. Oh. Okay. Wow. Okay. All right. A champion is talking. All right. Say <laughs> Say your piece then. Uh, after that match is ended, win, lose, or draw, uh, Scotty Payne wants to get crazy. He wants to talk about an asylum match. I'm going to show him how crazy the redneck wrestling machine can be. Since that match is done, I'm coming in that ring, and I guarantee you, I'll leave Scotty Payne in a pool of his own blood uh, live on so down. I, I can I point something out because you're dealing with Scotty Payne here. I mean, the asylum match, nobody had only one person that was able to beat Scotty in that match, and that was Blade. And I was the first person to call him out, so you're you're not going to be in for an easy match against Payne in that well, asylum no match. Doubt. And I'm just saying, on Showdown, I'm going to do what I've done in the past. Me and Scotty Payne is one and one. He beat me, I beat him. And uh, I'm going to bust him wide open and send that message. If you want this title, you're going to pry it from my cold, dead hands. Oh, you're, you're in for a real treat at, in the asylum. I'm just telling you that. I faced him before. I got my butt whooped. I got my butt whooped by one vote. So you're in there for a hell of a match against him. All right, so Baron, who do you got in this match, Scotty or Jacob? Uh, I'm a, you know, I like Jacob. I think he could definitely be a, a champion here. Uh, but I don't know, something about Scotty Payne. He's just got that, you know, dark, demented kind of guy. And I think, I think you're looking at a new champ. All right, uh, match five, we have Duchess versus Catherine. Uh, like I said, Duchess is being trained by Pandora as far as role playing goes. So uh, just by seeing her character development so far with Pandora, it seems like uh, she's taking Pandora's advice and actually using it. So um, we'll see how she does when it comes to the deadline and all that. But uh, who do you guys got on this one? I'm going to go with Duchess on this one. I've known Duchess for a little bit, and I, I think she's pretty good. I don't, I mean, she needs a little help here and there, but I think she'll easily take this one. All right. Kane, who do you got? I'm going to go with Duchess as well. Pretty much like Baron said, I mean, you know, plus, I've seen her here and there, and I think with the help she's getting, Duchess will take it. And plus, like, she's being trained by Pandora, too. Or, if you want to be more specific, she's being trained by Lucky Lola, since she's a trainer on WWH now. So, she's learning, basically, from a w former world champion, how to roleplay right. So Technically, Andy Rhodes, too, if you want to get technical about it. Mm. All right, yeah, to Andy Rhodes, too. But, same person overall, but you get what I mean. She's being trained by her because I referred her to her. Because Duchess needed help, she even says she even said like I I'm not good at this. So, you know, well, it was something along those lines. You know, I can't remember exactly how what she said, but she, you know, it sounded like she needed help. So, I told her, I know someone who could train you, and then I contacted Pandora. She, they both said they were down to to do it. So now she's being trained. She so, opened Pandora's box and yeah, basically don't make a history. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> So, uh, Samson, you probably are going with Duchess as well? Uh, I mean, she's tra being trained by Lucky or Pandora, whatever you like to call her. 
Uh, I think Duchess could win this one easily. I mean, I I saw her well played then at the beginning, and it's like she, I, she's not gonna, she can't do well, but she's being trained by Pandora, or Lucky, whoever you want to call her. She could pull this out. She could, she could surprise me this week at the All training right. she's getting. All right. Match number six, we got Randy Roberts versus John Blade. <laughs> uh, now, I, I'm already, uh, my prediction, I'm just going to go with Randy Roberts. Hey, match. What happened? What did Kane say? Uh, so, something, I don't know. All right, Baron. He said he needs yep. a beer. <laughs> All right, Baron, who do you got on this one? Yeah. I'm never going to pick John Blade unless I know the other person is not going to show up. Well, uh, he, well, he Randy Roberts did, you know, post at the last minute too last week. So right, I think Randy Roberts will show up. Um, John Blade's on a little losing streak here. I mean, he played with the big dogs last week. Now, you know, he's going to be pushed down a little bit. Maybe, you know, I'm not going to pick John Blade, but I want to see him come out with something really good, just for the simple fact that he did lose last week. Right, on showdown. So maybe he read some of those role plays. Well, maybe give you some did some improvement, but it, doubtful. All right, Kane, who do you got? You know, I'm still on the fence about this. Uh, I'll say Randy's going to pick up the win this week, but uh, but don't count John Blade out because uh, if things go. The way it's going, I'm like, it's going to to take under the advisement of, uh, you know, a he's cutting in and out. Rose member, uh, champion in this business. All right. Am I with you now? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, if he takes under the advisement of a champion in this business and a Holly Heroes member, I'll say. Uh, by this time next year, John Blade will be the world heavyweight champion. But for right now, he's he's not going to get the job done against Randy Roberts. All right. So, Samson, who do you got? I, I, I'm going to have to go with Roberts on this. I mean, like Kane said, like, you know, if Blade gets a proper training from a champion or a Hall of Heroes member, Blade may be able to surprise us, but in a couple of, a year or two, but I have to go for right now. I have to go with Roberts on this one. All right, match seven, which is going to be a honestly, it's going to be one of the matches of the night. I believe. I don't know if you guys would agree, and it's a tag match between the Devil's Rejects against the Horsemen, and the special referee is Jake Orton. Uh, now, Jake did come to me and kind of question why is Jake the referee, and I and I plainly told him I said, look. These two teams want tag gold, and they don't like you. So what better way than put Jake in charge of that? Just to be a dick to them. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, and he's like, okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. I got it. So a lot of things are going to happen in this match, I bet. So um, who do you guys got in this one? I, this one is very tough for me because you, uh, Sting and The Undertaker are very good our peers as well. And so are Xavier and Coley. So it's pretty much a toss-up with this match. I will take the floor on this one. Uh, you know, not only have I read a lot of their stuff because I've written both the Horsemen and uh, the Devil's Rejects matches over the last few weeks, not always, even though, you know, I can go to a moose set and figure out how to write a match, but I like to read the piece to get the attitude, you know? Right. So uh, I've read both teams and... It's going to be a close one, but uh, the Horsemen have been pressed of late, so I'm going to give it to the Horsemen. All right. Samson, who do you got? Well, the Double Three Sex has been, you know, I read their role plays. The Horsemen, I have read both of their role plays, and both, it's tough to really decide on who the who to go for, but... I have to give my... I have to give it up for the Devil's Rejects. I... I think they're gonna pull this out against them, about against the horsemen. All right, Baron, who do you got? Uh, you know, I made this statement, maybe not the last podcast podcast before, 
a couple of weeks ago. I believe Devil's Rejects should be the tag team champions. Uh, I think... That was the first one, yes. I think... But they are they, in they are in the War Games match against the tag team champions again. That's true. Yeah, they are. Uh, I I think I think they're, they're the better tag team. I think Key and I, Orton are both pretty good, but I I think all together uh, Devil's Rejects are a little bit better. All I'm right. gonna go with Devil Rejects on this one. All right. Now match eight. This is. I would like to take. All right, go for it. Go if for you it don't again. mind. Uh, I just want to bring up my point. I told them this in the first one, but uh, you know, when we had the tag title match at Shogun, I believe is when it was. Um, you know, it come down, and I ended up being the last vote on that, and I couldn't call it. I mean, it was a flip of the coin. It's why the tag team champions are who they are right now. Yeah, uh, I agree. I mean, they both of them were good. I, you know, Orton is just. And both I don't sides. get the whole German thing, uh, uh, but it, it was a flip of a coin match. I'm not stating the, I'm not questioning the judges on that match whatsoever. But I mean, they are a little yeah. questionable. Don't, uh, don't you? <laughs> and, and plus, both both sides actually like the way the results came out anyway because it was an amazing match. Yeah, so, and yeah, and I think they'll get their time again. I think. I you, think you're not going to see the end of them. I think. Because I think what's going to happen is I think this the War Games match because that's the main event for the pay per view. Obviously, is that's the tag titles, that's the main event. Like the Hell in the Cells before it, but that, the Horsemen, Devil's Rejects, and Jake and Key, they're the main event. So I think this War Games match is going to show what the Devil's Rejects can really do, and and also it could show what the Horsemen can do too. And same with Jake and Key, it's going to be a it's going to be a really big toss up in the end. Uh, but moving on, we have match eight, Randy Fields against Biker Bitch with Chris Matthews at her corner. Now, this match could go very well, but since Biker Bitch didn't show up last week, kind of gives it a little disadvantage, so to speak. But then again, though, she's literally the first one to roleplay. She already posted her roleplay up. So... So, okay, how bad is my background noise? Is that bothering you too bad for me to go you're ahead? speaking too softly. You're you're low on your end there, Kane. Like, uh... Well, okay, I was in my jacket. Is that better? Yeah, yeah, that's better. Okay, right. I had a train going by, so I didn't know if I had bad feedback or anything. Gotcha. Uh, okay, so, Samson, who do you got in this match? Uh... Well, just to be a dick, I would, uh, I'll say biker bitch, but Randy Fields, Randy Fields is a tough guy, but I have to go with my team on this biker bitch. All right. Kane, who do you got? Well, you know what? Just to show you, you know, because I'm in aces and eights don't mean anything. I mean, I will always be upfront and honest, and if they don't like it, I mean, I'll super kick. Chris Matthews in the mouth right now with my aces and eights best on. <laughs> but you know what? That's a funny thing. Like, not gonna lie, even though they're all like, we're part of aces and eights, but damn, Randy Fields is gonna destroy Biker. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like this for me. You know, I've watched Randy Fields for a long time, and I know what he's gonna bring, and I know what Biker Bitch is gonna bring. But uh, end of the day, I'm going to give it to Randy Fields. I'm going to say, you know, he's still in a pissed off mood about last week. He wants his payback on aces and eights. And what better way to get it than take out the president? That's true. That's a good point. Uh, obviously, Baron, you're, you're field. So I, we, I think we already know who's, what your prediction is. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the prediction is going to be obvious. But like, like touch what Chris Kane touched on. Hey, you no, know, uh. This is definitely not about win or lose for Randy Fields. This is, uh, he could care less if he wins this match, to be honest with you. It's right now, he's out of Aces and Aids blood and Chris Matthews. It, you throw anybody in the way, who's going to have to lose for him. Uh, okay. And then finally, the main event 
Chris Matthews with Piker Pitch on his at his corner against Equinox. Now, Equinox did mention this a while back in before uh, the offsite of of the podcast that uh, these two have met in another place for the world title, and Chris Matthews La La Land in La La Land, and uh, Chris Matthews got the win on that. So could this possibly be a rematch from there to here? And the bigger question is, will Chris Matthews show that belt too? Kind of rub it in Equinox's face. You're right. He could. Um, I, I remember Randy Fields was part of La La Land uh, during that Matthews and Equinox feud. And hell, I remember quite a few of their matches. I booked them to, to headline pay-per-views. Uh, but to touch back on the second to last match, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you see good old Randy Fields coming out here yet again. Um, now, now let's let's also put this on record too. E- Randy Fields and Equinox are not friends. <laughs> right? Well, you know, I mean, I mean, they only have not... one, they only have one thing in common, and that's aces and eights. It's true. Um, you know, you're this is probably. The first for Randy Fields, you're seeing a little lighter side of Randy Fields. Uh, the destiny of Randy Fields is to get that belt or back around his waist for a third or fourth time. Um, and really, you know, he, he's turned babyface a little bit. A little bit, but not by much, right? Like, it's. I, I, would you say that he's like a, a tweener? And it worries me when Randy Fields starts going facious. You know the the last the last role play Randy Fields went pretty damn baby face. Uh, I think Chris Matthews, just for the simple fact of a scumbag that he actually is, kind of brings out the baby face of Randy Fields. So you know, it, he's not friends with anybody in the company. He don't need anybody. He don't need five or six other men by his side to help him win the championship either. Uh, but well, he will oh, step in. No, well. <laughs> wow! So he basically just told. Matthews, that he's a little kid, like saying that he just kind of called out the whole group, though. Yeah, but at the same time, if you think about it, he calls out Matthews saying that he doesn't need six people to protect him. Oh, well, Randy Fields has never point. needed six people to protect him with the title ring. Ever. Exactly. I think that's, that, that's what a call out for Randy Fields. Wow, that's just that's big. That's big. Not gonna lie. Uh, and of course, you know, we've got segments from and you know, we got appearances from Andy Rhodes, Paige Matthews, Shane McMahon, Fedor Spetov, if that's how he said his name, Caleb Steele, sure. Jake Orton, Key Morbid, and Ryan Payne. Um, since Ryan Payne is making his return officially now, because I talked to him offline and he's he's been working a lot and so. He's now figuring out, like, what better way to get back. And I said, just do a segment. That's fine. So he's going to be writing that up. Don't know when, but he's already, he, said that he, he said that he can do it. So, uh, uh, But that's pretty much it for the showdown card. Uh, again, well, not, nine matches. That is, last week was ten. This week's nine. And that's with that's including with scheduling all the characters out, too. So... Well, Wait, so uh, so the big question is, with the way the activity is going right now and such, do you think that it's possible temptations to bring in another show? I, I'd say by first of the year anyway, Inner Circle's coming back. Like, do you guys think that Inner Circle should make their return, though? Like, because, I mean, granted, today we've, you know, today we have a big spike in activity within the last 24 hours, but... Again, we don't know if this is going to be like this every day. You know what I mean? But the way that everything was is going now with everyone being active and around and all, it seems like we might get another show. So what do you guys think of that? I mean, we're taking baby, we're taking baby steps, obviously. Like, we want to make sure if a show comes back, we want it to run the right way. And we don't worry. We don't want to rush. I don't want to rush it, basically. I'm all I'm for it. I think, uh, like I said a while ago, I think by the first of the year, if everything keeps going as good as it's going right now, we should bring the show in. But uh, before we get to that, uh, but uh, Bar- well, well, let's get Baron's uh, opinion on this. Do you think that we're you know we're taking it slow with one show for now, and 
even though activity's gone better, is attempting to bring in another show at least at the end of the year or beginning of the year of next year. Well, yeah, yeah. I think I'm thinking beginning of the year. You don't want to rush into another show just because today, you know, you got pretty pretty good activity on the weekend. I think you want to get a few more sign signings for the company, uh, and then officially bring an inner circle. But uh, I would love to see inner circle back. That's where Randy Fields started his. His whole career. Okay, was now in inner circle. Okay. Now, yeah. Uh, now, the big question is: Will the WWH title be brought back, or should we just bring back an, another title? Uh, my thing is, I, I mean, I hated it, you know, in WWE and everywhere else having, you know, a bunch of titles. I think the main world title should circulate, really. I think we should bring in a title for Inner Circle, but it not be equal to the World Heavyweight Championship. So the big question is then, what title should we even think of, or I, that I should think of bringing in? Because we still have, I still have a few titles that uh, that could be brought back in. Yeah, right. well, you won't want to bring in the WWH title because that's obviously, I would say, probably the bigger the biggest title in WWH is actually the WWH title, not the WWH World Heavyweight, because there's a difference between those two. Uh, you know, it could be another heavyweight championship, no limits championship, or well, I guess you can't really do that because there's already no limit championship. But yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I think you know what I'm saying. Sorry about that. What about the Showtime, Showtime championship? Wasn't there like a Showtime championship before? No, there wasn't. I could bring back the underground title. That was yeah, the that title was, I was thinking of. That, that made, was that that title was made pretty damn big by Zach Strident, if I got his name. Zane Strident. Zach, Zane, Zane Strident. Yeah. Uh, he held that it fucking was. title for a long time, and he made that into a bigger title than what even WWH title was. So. Yeah. You never know. That could be a pretty big title. That's true. And then we also, I do have one title that hasn't been brought back in a long time, and that's the Hardcore title. Uh, that's also up there, but, you know, we're we already doing Hardcore matches as it is, even with the regular Yeah, matches. I wouldn't do that. Not, And I'm going to bring up a point a little later on. In the future, there'll be more references to that if things go the way I want to for a better reason. Not to back the hardcore title. There are other two championships too, and that's the Titan Championship and the Velocity Championship. Uh, but then other other companies have been using those names for those for their titles too. So I don't want to just be thrown into the uh, you know into the hat by using the same names over and over. So uh, uh. I'll, just have, I'll just have to think of different names to come up with and, uh, you know, for future. Or uh, there is one other title that hasn't been brought back in like seven years, and that's the Spirit Championship. Oh, God, yeah, that's all that yeah, title right that, there. Yeah, that's the that's most hit right there. <laughs> yeah. that, that, I think that title was made because of Spirit Fire, if anybody can recall who that is. Yes, I can. Yeah, so... That off on the e-fetting age, fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's when you know you've been in e-fetting way too goddamn long, and you're well, older and shit. I don't know if this would make sense, but... You, I mean, I guess you can't really use that. Oh, never mind, I was going to say, why not we have a mixed tag team championship belt, but I guess that you can use that for the regular tag What's team. What's the so. point of that? Because, I mean... I know, know, I'm just looking up. I'm just looking some stuff way, up, and... Because... Yeah, that's... It was just, that's true. So, but I mean, we already have, you know, title, you know, design titles ready. We just got to put the names in them. That's pretty much all it needs to be. Right. Done. And, and, you know, it would be even interesting to see and, you know, how that draft would go down. That's always the fun part, seeing who goes where, what goes where, and that's too. spice some things up a little bit, you know. And Hell. That, that is a question. He brought up a good point. Say uh, the draft does come around, we bring another show. Uh, are champions going to be involved in that? Or are they going to be excluded? What's up with well, that? Well, I think I think everybody's involved with that draft, Every, aren't they? 
Everybody's involved, even the DMs. Nice. So, uh, so you never know, like set, like, like you can see, like, you know, you can see Edwards. Yeah, he may he may be the co GM along with Mansfield, but next thing you know, once Inner Circle comes, one of them's going to be the co GM from that. So, well, I mean, the fact is, you know, uh, since Mansfield's come on the scene, he's done done some great things, and we're going to get into his new signing here in just a little bit, and how big of a deal that is, and uh, well, we you know. Well, we can talk about it now since we already talked about uh, Showdown, but we can also talk about War Games for a little bit, too, since the card is about to be final this weekend. Well, uh, before before we get into that, uh, we we drifted off there, and I didn't want to interrupt the topic at hand. Uh, Baron kind of, he, he kind of got me there, talking about aces and eights. So I want to throw out a challenge, if you will, because... Uh, Dylan was on the card this week, so that means next week Chris Kane needs to match. So are you saying that you want to face Fields next week? So uh, I'm saying we should, you know, to keep the storylines going and everything, I'm saying next week uh, I'm making a challenge if my Aces and Eights partner over there, uh, where are you at there, Matthews? What now? He's not even paying uh, attention. I'm here. I'm just. And that's your partner. That's who you decide to align with. Matthew, <laughs> the man can't even are, listen straight. <laughs> are you down with the world champion teaming with the No Limits champion next week? Hell yeah. Let's do it. I, well, can... I tell you what. What about next week? We see a War Games preview and we have uh, Chris Kane and Chris Matthews team up and take on Randy Fields and Scotty Payne. Oh. oh, that would be that would be a that would be a hell of a match right there. What do you say? What, what say you, Baron? Do you accept? You know, the, Randy Fields will never back down from a challenge. Hell, Randy Fields would take him on in a handicap match if you want to get technical with it. But if he's got to have a partner, I'll go ahead and take Scotty Payne, and we'll show you why we're the number one contenders. Yeah. Well, take, what um, about it? Is that official, there, Adrian? That will be official, definitely. Is that going to be a headlining main event for Showdown? I no guess. way. Yeah, that's already. Just, just going to be a regular tag team match, or is it going to be a special match? What? It'll be uh, 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 to, 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 to shape things up. To, sh- to shape things up. It's going to be a steel cage. Hell, Hell, I'm good with that. And it's not like the fence is steel cage. It's the, yeah. it's the it's old. It's going to be a steel cage. Wait, and, and well, let me be more specific here. It's not going to be an the ordinary. It's, 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 it's going to be the it's going to be the blue bar old school steel cage. Oh God! Like, All right. like you're you're like w- like when you get thrown to the ropes, you're hitting that steel cage too, and that loud clacking sound is heard. So we're in, but uh, that's got to be the main event for Showdown next week. It is, well, it is the main event. I mean, how big of a match that is that? You know, so. Um, you know, let's just hope that uh, Kane and uh, Matthews don't get too distracted by their women. Hey, I tell you what, what aces and eights will take care of our women during the opening of the show, all the way to the semi main event. Come out, be warmed up, and still whoop Scotty Payne and Randy Fields' monkey ass all over showdown. All right, all right. You know, then. it would it would even be better for that match is if you found you a third person and let's just say let's do a a, a fucking per- six man tag and let's bring in uh, the the great would- one. Oh, uh, I think as much as I respect the lock, I think we should it should be stuck with what two with the people who fight at war games, you know, in the steel cage. So wait, wait, see- wait a minute, wait. Are you scared though, Matthews? No, I'm, no, thinking, I'm, I, I'm thinking the name, The Rock, just, tell you, you what, the Rock, the Rock wants to show up. I tell you what, I know a guy. We'll have a, we'll have a third man. Oh, uh, boy. What's I next? mean, The Isn't Rock is, on, uh, is obviously on bi-weekly on Showdown just for the simple fact the man's got to make movies. I mean, Adrian went ahead and told him, Gave him the part-time contract, and he, he don't need a title. 
I said the rock, the rock ain't gonna do shit. He, he, you know when when we say when Aces and Eight says, "Hey, we got a third guy," the rock's like, "No, no, 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 no." The rock's gotta go to Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> All right then. then uh, so what is it? Is it gonna be uh, a tag team or a six person tag? Which is it? It's whatever the Aces of Eights decide because they're obviously challenging the great one. Well, I tell you what, bring the rock and uh, wow, we'll have we'll have a six man, a six All man right. steel cage match. That's yeah. gonna be class. That's gonna be class. Six man what, tag class main, main event, something? and I guarantee you, as the No Limits champion, uh, I have a partner before that card's ready to go up. All right, all right, then it's official. Six person. Oh, God. Six person steel cage match and that's gonna be clash the fuck. I can tell you that much. Perhaps, but I could always change it to a hell in a cell, but that's just going overboard. Yeah, now, that's we'll, a bit too much for a uh, a showdown. A, a showdown car. That's uh, no, that's no. pushing the limits. No, right that's true. So a steel cage is fine. I mean, I could make it a steel cage explosions match, but again, that's that's too much for a showdown. Because but. in reality, if that was to happen, nobody would show up at. At a, at the at the pay per view, they'll be too hot right now after that match with the explosion. Well, yeah, you, you don't, don't well, want well, that. Well, wait a minute, you guys don't know the medical team backstage like that. You have Logan Lawlett running that shit along with Lucky and and, uh, and all that. Yeah. So they can is Logan yeah. Lawlett the is that the the eighth daughter or ninth daughter? I can't remember. That's that's Logan a boy. Guy. It's a son. So oh. well, yeah. Okay. He's, well, Logan. I mean, He's not officially part of the company, but he can be there to help out. And he he's the chief of medicine at a hospital, so he yeah, can, and he, I mean, he, can, he, he can heal he, up pretty quickly. So He saved the GM's life, and that'll be coming more on, on details, but that's been talked about a little bit in the general RPs that nobody pays no attention to, like Matthews. <laughs> was trying to, I was trying to set up a fucking storyline earlier, and he was like, what? I'm like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and that, my friends, is your world heavyweight champion. Seriously. Okay, now, wow. wow. Coming from a I do want to say this. Now, okay, let's talk about war games for a little bit because we already have one, two, three, four. We already have five matches set. Um,. We already, we already have um, the Bombshells Championship, uh, which is Soraya Waters versus Annalise Vance, a No Limits Championship Asylum match with Kane and Payne. You have the International Championship with our special guest referee Demi May, with Everett, oh, Al- with Everett Aloni against Killer. Then you have the Hell in a Cell match with Chris Matthews and Randy Fields, and then you have the War Games match for the World Tag Team Titles. These are all big matches, and we still have two more matches to fill for that card, too. And possibly a Bombshells match is going to be added to that. But who do you think, as far as feuds are going right now, should be added to that card? Well, I think, I think, I don't know if you mentioned name, because, you know, I've, I've got old-timers. But uh, I'm thinking Equinox and Biker Bitch should be in a match. Make it mm-hmm. official. Just a... You know, uh, mid card to early, you know. So you think uh, they should just a typical singles match? Ain't gotta be nothing brutal. Just oh. help can be on the pre-show. How about well, what do you guys think that it should be a contendership match? No, not every match has got to be a contendership match. I don't think. I think there's a few other out there uh, that are probably higher up on that contendership level. Right. Um, you now, know, if you want to get technical, John Blaze should be a, in a contendership match. Unfortunately, that is true. Like he, As much I as I hate what, to say it, <laughs> that here's is what true. I'll do. Here is what I'll do. Just because you said that right here now, I'm making the challenge on the pre-show, because God knows the boy don't deserve to be on pay-per-view. But uh, on the pre-show... Before I get to Scotty Payne, I'll defend the No Limits title on the pre-show against John Blake. Oh, whoa! Oh, is are you sure uh, about Kane that? Kane pulling a double. Are you yeah, sure? Yeah, let's say what Kane. Let's say Kane loses. Then, huh? Then what? 
Then he's got to go fight Scotty Payne. <laughs> oh God! Wait a minute. <laughs> Well, I don't, I, you know, I don't think it, it say Kane did lose the title on the pre-show match. He doesn't, he doesn't need a, John Blade doesn't need to go in and face Scotty Payne. Scotty Payne and Chris Kane without a title is good enough. You don't, you well, don't, that, that feud is, that's been built up. It, so there's no title hurt, needed yeah. for that. That's well, true. one and one. But, uh, mm -hmm. I do, if there is a spot open, uh. There's a so far match three is has two question marks so that could be a match right there. Well, uh, we have anybody to come into some more in contention, uh, you know, due to storylines beforehand. But uh, you know what? I somehow I'm not sense, happy. I, I somehow sense Kurt Orton's going to be involved. Like he's going to take a spot. Right. I think, I'm not. I think he's going to take a spot. I'm not happy if uh, there comes an opener and you just need something to fill. Uh, I'm going to throw it out there. I'm not happy. Uh, open challenge. Uh, the great one there, uh, Dylan Kale, call him out. Against The Rock? Wow. <laughs> well, you know, The Rock only signed up for two, three pay-per-views a year. So, I mean, this could be one of them. The, the, but the, the man The Rock really wants to face in it, it, it's, you know, it's it's long overdue is good old Adrian Hart. Yeah, but he, he's not going to be, he's already, he hung those boots up a long time ago. Like, he can't even. Well, hell, he can borrow a pair of fucking The Rock's boots. He's got about 1,500 of them. <laughs> but, what I, but what I mean is, is, uh, um, Chris Kane just dropped the call, so something happened there. Uh, but uh, what I mean is that I don't think he can even take bumps anymore and all that. Like, he moves, he's done, done. So I doubt that's going to happen, but it seems like Dylan Never Kay, say never. But, but regardless of that, it seems like Dylan K still wants a piece of the rock. Well, as the rock always says, Which bathroom? Just bring it, Jabroni. Yeah, so, uh, that's true. So, so I guess uh, we got Adrian Hart, your No Limits Champion, Chris Kane, wrapping things up. Yep. So like us and and uh, follow us on Twitter at WHEFed and on Facebook at WHEFed too. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube at WHEFed as well. So uh, I think that's it. I guess we could just call it a night, and uh, this podcast will be going up hopefully a couple of hours with the, if everything's done right. So, oh, you're uh, so fine. It'll be up about Tuesday. It is what it is. We'll see whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, but thanks once again, everyone, and uh, have a good one.